everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carmen and today's video is going to be on Young Living. It's actually a two-parter, so there's gonna be part one and part two. Um, and I apologize for any background noise. Bunch of kids, homeschooled, trying to keep them quiet. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna do the best I can with what I've got. So part one is going to focus on my, how I got started with Young Living and my experiences with Young Living. And then part two is gonna focus on all the research that I did during my time with Young Living. Okay, so Young Living Essential Oils. This is the point of time where I had really, uh, where I really did a deep dive towards the middle of my Young Living uh, years, really grand total of like two years, but right in the middle of that, I did a real deep dive into multi-level marketing and pyramid schemes and how they relate to each other. And that's when my eyes were open. But at the time I had started Young Living, I was already kind of burned on the idea of these network marketing companies. I had been burned by American Income Life Insurance Company, was not happy about that company or the experience. And then at this point, I was really upset with Arbonne because I had found out they were using ingredients. They've changed. I don't think the ingredients are the same now. But at the time, I was like, you're using the same ingredients in products that I can buy at the store. You say one thing and you do another. So I was burned by Arbonne. I was done with multi-level marketing, or so I thought. So what happened? Well, I'm at work. My boss and I are chit-chatting. I've been working at this place since I was 16. So I've been there for a long time. This is 2015 when I had um, come involved, become involved with Young Living. So 2015, my boss and I are chatting, doing our work. Um, my friend who had got me started with Arbonne comes in, and she has this mesmerized look on her face and I'm like what's going on and she comes in and she has this pouch like this carrier pouch and she pulls out these essential oils and starts talking about how these amazing little bottles of product do amazing things and she is talking about them I don't remember the exact word she says but she talks about Young Living she calls it the oldest company oldest essential oil company in the world I do remember that phrase and how these products were just all great for all kinds of skin and health issues pay attention to that because um, skin and health issues in 2015 is going to come up later on um, as it relates to 2014 warning letters young living received oh <laughs> little guy is had, grabbing some tissues go for it um, anyway so being the person I am, I like to look things up. So I'm like, okay, I'm curious, essential oils. At this point, with Arbonne, I wanted botanically pay based skincare and healthcare products or, or wellness products, whatever. So I was like, okay, I like botanically based. These look like the botanicals themselves or essence of the botanicals themselves. It's just one step further in my journey. Oh God, I hate that word. Journey towards more natural living yeah cringy I know um so I'm okay I'm interested they smell good um one sample she gave us to use was thieves yeah so thieves uh in a little little sample and I'm like oh there's what a few drops in here anyway so she gives us samples and I look at the name of the company on the bottle she tells us the name of the company and I immediately hop on the computer my boss knows I'm doing this because we're like right next door, right next to each other on our desk. And I just start clicky clacky typing in, looking things up. And I go to Young Living's website and my heart sinks because right there on the website is International Grand Convention. I'm like, it's one of those companies. <sighs> but I decided, well, I'm going to look up essential oils anyway. So I start looking up essential oils. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm interested in this multi-level marketing company. I have enough experience with these companies from Avon, from Arbon, from American Income Life that I'm like, do I really want to do this again? So I look up the company, uh, not the company, but I look up a bunch of information on the spot, like right here on my desk at work. And within 30 minutes, I have a bunch of information on essential oils, um, some of their benefits, some things that are not necessarily beneficial, all kinds of stuff. And so I'm researching this stuff 
and I'm like talking to my boss. I'm like, oh yeah, uh, based on what I can find, this is like good for sleeping. Like lavender is good for sleeping, or you know, it might have some skin health benefits. Tea tree is pretty good. In some properties, um, you go to PubMed, you can find a bunch of stuff. Um, so I'm doing that, and I find all this information. And then I'm like, I don't know if I want to come in. So I'm like, I'm going to look this up, but I'm going to hold off on this whole Young Living thing. And I actually ended up saving up and I bought essential oils from a company called Organic Infusions. It's um, a company that's actually local to me. Um, and actually their warehouse I, at the time is where my husband works. He doesn't work there at the warehouse. He works at a different manufacturing, but they're neighbors. So I'm like, cool, I can get oils from just a couple of miles away from me. Yay. So I got my kit. My very first essential oils kit is from Organic Infusions. And at the time I bought this kit, they gave me two full-size bottles, four-ounce bottles of lavender and tea tree. And they also gave me a four-ounce bottle of carrier oil. If you don't know what the essential oil lingo is, a carrier oil is any fatty oil like grapeseed, coconut, um, hemp seed, let's see, castor oil, any fatty oil that will be used to hold an essential oil. Um, also to note, essential oils is a misnomer. It's not, they're not actually oil. When they were first distilled about 1200 years ago, distillation is actually a very new process. Um, when they were first distilled uh, 1200 years ago, they noticed that the oil, for the most part, separated itself from water. So they were called oils, even though they have no lipid properties. So an essential oil is not an essential oil in the sense that it's fatty lipid. It's an oil in the sense that it separates or it's hydrophobic. It separates itself from water. Um, most essential oils are actually multitude of small constituents mostly esters, mostly some like rose or wax. Um, most components in the plant botanicals are actually, sorry, there's something in my eye, are actually um, uh, too heavy to be distilled in the distillation process, but some things like the waxes and rose will get out. Um, and fun fact, when essential oils were first distilled, the distillation process was actually invented to get rose water. And when they distilled the rose water, they threw out the rose essential oil, which is actually one of the most expensive oils around. So fun fact. Um, so the process um, of distillation separates the oil from the water. So yay. And the word essential for, for water actually refers to the essence, the scent of the plant. It has nothing to do with um, the fact that it's essential. Um, essential oils are not necessarily essential to anything. Um, we as humans have found value to, to them. Only about 5% of plant matter in the world creates essential oils, and they're either found in the roots or in uh, cells on the leaves, and they're usually used to either attract pollinators or to um, repel um, I don't know, whatever animal or creature is going to destroy the plant. So they can be used to attract or to repel. Um, but otherwise, they have no actual use to the plant, which is why most plants don't actually create essential oils. So back to essential oils. So I found all that information within 30 minutes of searching and then bought my kit from Organic Infusions. And then my friend and I did this fun little test where we took peppermint from... Hold on one second. So my friend and I did this test. We took both of our peppermint essential oils, right? Her peppermint from her from Young Living and my peppermint from Organic Infusions. And we did what's called a drop test. This is where you put the essential oil, you drop an essential oil on paper and let it volatize. So essential oils are volatile organic compounds. <laughs> They are. So if people, if you see essential oil users start freaking out about a volatile organic compounds, just remind them that essential oil is a volatile organic compound. Volatile just means that it evaporates quickly. Organic means it's carbon-based and compound means it's created or it has a bunch of different constituents in it. Volatile organic compounds. Nothing scary about those. So anyway, 
you let it volatize, so you let it evaporate, and if it leaves a stain, it's supposed to be real or fake or have adulterants in it. So my peppermint actually did leave a stain, and hers didn't really leave much of a stain. And I could tell you the reason for that is because peppermint go, can go through multiple distillations. Not the plant matter, but the oil itself. So what happens with peppermint is when you distill it the first time, you get just the raw herbal peppermint, which has a, a combination minty herbal scent to it. So it's a little bit stronger. It's not quite as sweet, not very good for flavoring, but is very good for using um, if you want a more pure peppermint oil. Then you take the oil and you distill it again. The second distillation of peppermint will actually give you that candy cane uh, oil scent, oil flavor. Um, and it's actually really good for using in um, candies and stuff. And that's actually what they do when they use it for food is they'll buy the second distillation peppermint oil in order to get that candy flavor. So mine was the second distillation and it definitely had more candy cane scent and flavor to it. And at the time, one of the reasons why I wanted to buy essential oils was because I had read you couldn't use them internally and I'd never recommend using them internally, not anymore. But I liked the idea of being able to put a little bit of peppermint in coffee and a little bit of peppermint in um, hot chocolate. Don't do that. And I never did that for my kids. But I still sometimes, if I feel a sore throat coming on, I will still put a little bit of peppermint in my coffee. It's a placebo, I'm sure. I like it. I don't know why I like it. I don't recommend it. It's not safe and it's probably not smart. So <laughs> I don't know why I still do that. It's very rare. It's very occasional, but I still do that. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, one of the reasons why I got it was I want to be able to use the oil. Now, the company that I bought from had label don't use for don't. It's not for internal use. And the reason is, unless you have um, recommendations from an aromatherapist, do not take your essential oils internally because only people who are trained in the effects that an essential oil has inside of inside your body and the effects and impacts it has um, with any medications, herbal supplements, or uh, drug interactions are the only people who can recommend internal use because they're going to know, oh, you using this and this, don't combine them too. Um, so anyway, so I did all that research very quickly and got all that information. Later on, we did the test and I was like, at first, okay, I'm still confused on this memory because I keep my memory for this. At first, I wanted my company, Organic Infusions, to win. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. I wanted my company, Organic Infusions, to win. And then when I was with Young Living, I was glad that it didn't win. And now looking back, I'm like, it didn't matter. <laughs> so it's a very confusing memory um, because my feelings towards it changed. But the fact was, mine did leave a slight tinge. Hers left almost no tinge. But that's because Young Living's is the first distillation and mine was the second. Now I think organic infusions has changed that, but I don't know. I haven't bought essential oils uh, at all in over a year. The last time I bought oils was um, from plant therapy, and I don't even remember when. I think it was before 2019. Um, I still have a lot that I'm trying to get rid of, trying to use up. We do like them in our diffusers, and yes, I have a lot of Young Living diffusers. One of them died. I'm not going to replace it. One of them is still going strong, and I'm just going to use it until it dies. And then when all my oils and essential oil diff diffusers are all done and gone, I may or may not replace them with plant therapy diffusers. Um, anyway, that's beside the point. Um, they just make the house smell good. I'll occasionally use them up in uh, cleaning products like baking soda to deodorize and stuff. But um, for the most part, they don't have the magical properties that I wanted them to have. <laughs> So anyway, we did those little tests and I felt at the time slightly convinced that I was interested. But before I bought my kit, she invited me to a lot of classes. Now I was also doing, even then, a lot of research, trying to get as much information about essential oils as possible. Some of the information I found was, wasn't complete. Um, I did learn about Young, Gary Young's history with his medical uh, licensing issues. I, and I started questioning these people who were teaching in classes. One of the people who was teaching in classes was the diamond level leader for our upline. So 
I was in the chain of distribution from, um, in terms of distributors from uh, the Royal Crown Diamond, who actually has family out here in my area, to the, let's see, what was it? The Crown Diamond, who, I don't know, they're, they seem nice enough. And then that, that Crown Diamond's Diamond Level leader, who she sponsored, then I have, then that diamond level leader sponsored our silver, who sponsored, no, our gold, who sponsored our silver, who sponsored my friend, who sponsored me. Okay, so we have a chain of distribution here. So I, the diamond level leader, I would take classes and I would sit in on these classes and I would pay attention and I would ask questions, a lot of questions. Well, what about this? What about that? But I found this, here's this document. But I found this document that also says this. Counteracting everything. I was very disrupted during these classes. To the point where the silver level leader said to my friend, forget about her. Just forget about her. Don't bother, you know, with this person because they're just going to ask too many questions. That's right. They don't like it when you ask questions. And I never forgot that. And actually, the silver and I, again, they, the, a lot of these people, the silver live in my area. My friend moved away, but we still are in contact. Um, but we don't see, we didn't see either eye and we still don't. Not, don't dislike this person um, as a person. Um, but I, I noticed that when I would show up to classes in person at this point, this person was very careful to what this person said around me because like don't use peppermint on kids i made that clear in my videos and so when she would when this person would talk about doing or using peppermint around little ones she she made it very clear that oh you put like you take a little bit on your finger and you just rub it on the clothes so that they get the smell but they're not getting um enough peppermint to cause problems so i'm like okay i'll back off um <clears throat> But anyway, <laughs> I have been fighting with a lot of these people for a long time, and I'm still fighting with the, or uh, I was fighting with the the diamond level, and we'll talk about that towards the later part of the video. And again, I apologize for background noise. But in any case, not worth it. And then I ended up signing up. And then I ended up doing classes. And I was all in. Now, I was still doing research, so I was like, I'm going to pull back the tide here of unsafe usage and say, you know, if I use something, I'll tell you how I use it. But I always added, please ask a doctor. Please ask a medical professional. Um, and, you know, just be careful. Um, because there's a lot that I don't know. I'm not an essential oil professional, even when I signed up. But there was a lot of classes and a lot of the things that they taught and a lot of people are going to be mad about this. And this is something I never agreed with. And I would always try to teach counter, you know, counter to this. But I also didn't open my mouth a lot because I didn't want to ruin friendships. But one thing that was that were taught, I have my notes here, was you can't be allergic to essential oils because there's no proteins in them. Now, that terrible, terrible information. Now, they didn't say it's because it was natural. It's because it had no proteins. That information actually comes from a guy named Stewart, David Stewart, and he was a diamond level leader. I think he still is in Young Living who wrote a book about essential oils. I'll have to look up this information, but he wrote this book about essential oils and said that you can't be allergic to them. The fact is, you can be allergic to anything on this planet. An allergy is your body's reaction, whether it's protein or not, to something. Um, whether it's in the air, whether it's protein-based or not, you can be allergic to anything. So I never approved of that information. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, we had a fight. Uh-oh, there's a baby looking at me. Sorry about that. I have a little one on my lap who might wiggle, but in any case, let me pick up where I left off. So they were talking about no allergies. The other things that bothered me were things like talking about how this Ninja Red um, juice is magical. So if you haven't heard about this, Ninja, um, it's named after the province in China, N-I-N-G-X-I-A. 
I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, so I apologize if I'm not. Please correct me on the pronunciation by writing it out phonetically in the comments if you can. Um, but Ninja Red is the name of their wolfberry-based juice. And I'm not, I'm not going to say wolfberry. It's goji berry. Now, the name wolfberry actually comes from the um, manufacturing company in China that grows it. And they do grow it in the Ningxia province. Um, but it's a manufacturing company. You can look this up online. Um, it's called Wolfberry. And they grow it and they sell it. And the reason, and Young Living also sells the goji berry botanical, the plant, the dried goji berries. Um, and they're certified organic. And the reason they're certified organic through the Young Living is because you can buy the certification through the company because the company is certified USDA organic. So you can buy the certification, but because Young Living has a lot of other ingredients added into their Ningxia berry, um, Ningxia red juice, um, you, they can't certify it organic unless they certify or have certified organic um, other ingredients. But anyway, they treat it like it's this magical plant. Hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> but they treat it like this Ningxia stuff is this magical superfood this magical drink that'll give you energy, that'll give you all kinds of nutrients. And really what it is, it's wolfberry, it's ninja. I'm using all the plug terms. Okay. So what the ninja red really is, it's goji berry puree with a bunch of juices from concentrate. The juices from concentrate off the top of my head are blueberry, tart cherry, uh, let's see, I can't remember, there's a few, there's a, uh, uh, there's this one that is actually very expensive to get, it's very hard to get, I think acai is in it, but there's another one that's, it starts with an A, it's very hard to get, I'll post links below, but you'll see that it's just a bunch of um, juice concentrates that are mixed in with water and the goji berry puree. Okay, so nothing magical about that. Actually, I figured out a way to get organic goji berry for half the price that Young Living sells it at my local Sprouts and mix it with any juice you want, like pomegranate juice is really good, pure pomegranate juice, or um, tart cherry juice. Soak the goji berries in, and then the next day, blend them with an immersion blender or in your regular blender, and bam, you've got a delicious pureed juice superfood that you can add to smoothies or turn into ice cream or whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> but it's, sorry, it's, my eyelashes are acting out and the baby's kicking me, but it's really easy to make on your own. Uh, it's not rocket science. It's a juice puree with juice. That's all it is. <laughs> so, Ninja. It did taste good. I mean, I liked it. Not gonna, not gonna lie. I liked the flavor of it. Did not like the price. Seventy dollars for two seven hundred fifty milliliter bottles. I don't think so. Very expensive stuff. Sorry, I got a little guy right here. Oof. You like his little outfit? I think it's adorable. <laughs> it reminds me of the little, the little baby Toby from uh, Labyrinth. Okay. Anyway. So it's not magical. Um, it's going to give you energy because it's juice with sugar and puree with sugar and fiber. So, of course, it's going to give you energy. And they do add essential oils. But when I did the math on the essential oils, excuse you. Oh. But when I did the math on the essential oils, mom life right here, I'm talking to you guys while I'm doing this. The essential oils was like a drop per um, less than a drop, less than a drop per, per serving. Each serving is about two ounces, um, uh, one or two ounces per serving, yeah. And so it was like less than a drop of total oil per serving. Still, <clears throat> excuse me, still too much oil for what you wanna be consuming. I'm pretty sure most food companies don't put that much oil inside their um, uh, foods and stuff, but not as much as people would think. Um, the other thing is, um, when, uh, when they would advertise, when our, my silver level leader at the time would advertise, um, things like frankincense, how they get their frankincense and why their frankincense is so special and so expensive is that 
they would say you they're the only ones in the world who have the rights to buy it from Oman <laughs> in the Middle East. And then they'd say, if anybody else claims, this is literally what she said. Um, she told this to my sister and to my friend. She said, anybody who claims they're getting their oils from Oman are getting their oils from Oman, France. Okay. <sighs> I Google mapped this because I was curious. I couldn't find an Oman in France. If Google Maps can't find it, it's probably not there. But that's what she said. <laughs> so that was ridiculous. He thinks so too, even though he didn't exist at the time. Um, the other thing is, especially with this diamond level leader, she would upline, she would talk about the blood brain barrier. And she still teaches classes on essential oils and brain health. Um, but she would talk about how the oils pass through the blood brain barrier and how, and honestly, I honestly don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I would think if the blood brain barrier is so important that it, certain things can't pass through it, um, even in your own body, I would think that anything that passes through it either has to be a medication like that works for a certain reason or has to be problematic. <laughs> Um, to pass through that because there's a reason it's there, right? We got we got to protect the brain. So anyway, uh, let's see. What did I write here? I can't even read my own writing. Talk about related what later? I don't even know what I wrote. <laughs> oh, let's. Yeah, I can't write to save my life. Oh, okay. So let's move on. So. How does the blood-brain barrier issue relate to um, a lot of the stuff I mentioned earlier? So I mentioned earlier that they talk about these things in 2015, but 2014, as we all know by now, Young Living was sent warning letters for their Ebola claims, but it wasn't limited to their Ebola claims. A lot of these claims were anything that treated the oils as a drug. Basically, if your um, distributors are claiming, hey, our essential oils act, basically um, act like medications by you can use them to treat um, burns. You can use them to help with um, colds. You can use them to do anything. Anything that's going to treat a medical condition or help or aid in a medical condition is considered by the FDA a drug. So it doesn't matter if you say, it, it doesn't even matter with the FDA if you put the disclaimer, not intended to be used as diagnosis, cure, treatment, or whatever. The fact that you're associating the two things together, according to the FDA, is evidence that you intend for it to be used as a drug. So whatever you say on the label doesn't matter. It's how you use it. And the FDA is very clear on these issues. He agrees. The FDA is very clear. Um, <clears throat> so they would... Uh, hold on one second. So anyway, they... Um, so they got... I don't even remember where I left off, so I apologize if this seems like it's not associated. Um, but in 2014, when they had those issues with the FDA, they didn't start, Young Living didn't actually start cracking down on how you could talk about oils um, until like mid, late 2015. Why? Now, at the time, I was like, oh, that's kind of annoying. I don't really care about the FDA and blah, blah, blah. This is before I entered law school when I did start caring. <laughs> but I'm like, you, you know, you can't censor me, whatever. <laughs> I don't advocate anything like that now, especially understanding what the rules are and what the laws are and what they're intended to do. Um, at the time, I still had a little touch of laissez-faire laissez capitalist mentality. Now I'm more, I've always been politically middle of the road, and I still am. Um, but now I'm more on the side of, well, there's a reason why laissez-faire doesn't work. So <laughs> there's a reason why the FDA exists. <laughs> So um, that said, um, they weren't cracking down until later in 2015. And some of the things they told you was like, you can't have certain literature in while you're um, doing classes or any type of thing that anything that could be a sales pitch or could make a sale for Young Living, whether it's for a retail sale, which rarely, if ever happened, or if it's for a... Um, starter kit sale presentation or class, you could not have books in the room in which you were teaching those class. You can't have them on display. And the reason is, there's two reasons. One is FDA regulation. Hold on. No bells, please. And two, 
um, not it's not actually a specific FDA regulation. It's just that you can't have these things associated with one another. And Young Living made it clear they didn't want you having those things in the same room. And two, the real reason is Gary Young wrote those books. So a lot of the books, I'm sorry, hold on. So if you've seen the essential oils uh, book, um, hold on. Look, it's actually this one. I found it. This essential oils user guide. I forget the name of it because the cover, it's so old. I've had, I've used it a lot and I've had it for a long time that the um, cover broke off, but it's this Young Living essential oils guide. I for, Again, I forget the name of it, but it basically, this is written by Gary Young. Okay, it's published through Life Science Publishing. Um, there's actually two. There's this version by Life Science Publishing and another one that um, also publishes for doTERRA, I think. Um, but this book is written by Gary Young, the original, and it's been redone many, many times. There's also the very large version, which is a bigger full. This is the considered the pocket edition. And um, the reason why you can't have a Young Living, Gary Young written book in the presence of your oils presentation is because it's just advertising. It's basically, incur if you have this while you're trying to make a sale, you're encouraging the person there to buy the product based on the company's own literature. They try to separate themselves from life science publishing, but it doesn't matter. It still belongs to the company. Hey kids, put the holy water down. Put the holy water down. Things you have to say when you're a parent. Put the holy water down. Okay. Another thing that happened. So they tend to talk about all these things like toxic chemicals. Um, and one of the people higher up, I think she, she's a silver now, and her husband is a biologist. Hold on. Had to get the holy water back. Yeah, that's the thing. We have holy water in this house. Okay. So she was like a, you got your nose, you okay? Oh, kids, I love them, but kids. Anyway, the higher up, she's silver now, her husband's a biologist, and he uses his uh, biology knowledge uh, to, biochemist, uses his degree, obviously, to promote essential oils. And he even wrote a book on it, it's crazy. And anyway, we'll talk about influencer marketing later. Um, cause it does relate. She had created these slides about toxic chemicals in a lot of products and beauty care products and why Young Living's products were different. Well, one of the horrible chemicals that she talked about was phenoxyethanol. Now phenoxyethanol is a preservative that people tend to use in lieu of parabens because it's considered gentler or whatever. It has its own issues. It's not necessarily toxic. You don't need a lot of it. Most products only have a little bit of it. Anyway, so she was talking about phenoxyethanol, and I'm like, <laughs> pull up. I have Young Living shampoo conditioner. Guess what they contain? Phenoxyethanol. So I went and I put that in the slide. I'm like, hello to my upline. So my upline, my silver level, was teaching the class from this other person's thing. So I messaged her, and actually I commented, and then we private message, and I said, Phenoxyethanol is in Young Living products. It's in quite a few. I mean, I have the shampoo. It's on the website. You can look it up yourself. So they corrected it. And they tried to spin it like this was no longer a bad chemical and Young Living is so judicious and awesome for picking in the things that are safe for you. Like, they spun it. Another thing they spun was, uh, what's it called? Uh, I, it's, a, it's another preservative. Sodium benzoate. This is another thing that they spun a lot. Um, the diamond level leader um, that I fought with early on was trying to spin zo sodium benzoate, which a lot of people in natural communities uh, do not like in their products. It's a preservative used in foods. It's typically safe. So how she spun it was that it was this safe, non-toxic, all-natural version of sodium benzoate that was being used in, by Young Living. And amen, Young Living is using these chemicals to help us because they're all natural. 
Yes, that was the spin. Sorry, you're gonna hear kids squeaking in the background. Anyway, so there was a lot of spin doctoring going on. I'm not sure when the timeline of these things happen, but they happen. So either 2015 or 2016. But in 2016, Young Living, it was, it came out that Young Living's cinnamon and Thebes were adulterated. And I'm gonna tell you the groups you can go to find for these products. Blue Tansy Analysis and Essential Oil Consumer Reports. Those are the two groups that have all the information regarding um, the cinnamon uh, issue. Now you're gonna hear a lot of people say cinnamon aldehyde is not natural component or not natural. It is, it is. It naturally occurs in cinnamon. It's a component of cinnamon. However, the issue with Young Living's is that Young Living's um, cinnamon aldehyde was discovered to be of synthetic origin, meaning the product, the cinnamon that they were selling was 50% artificial. Now, when you're buying an essential oil from a company that claims its essential oils are pure and all natural and straight from the source because they have the seed to steel process, you are not gonna be happy finding out that their cinnamon of all oils, <clears throat> it's a commonly, um, it's a very commonly um, diluted and, art and artificially created oil because it only comes from one part of the world and every distributor and every single company in the world gets their oil from there. Hold on one second. So when you have 50% adulterated oil, it's not good. It's not good for the company. It's not good for their claims. It's, it's just not good. Dr. Robert Pappas was the one who did the uh, testing now, he, now the way they spun this is that Dr. Pappas had a bone to pick with Young Living. He does not like the company and he makes no bones about it. And I'll tell you the story why. It's because back in the late 90s, um, Dr. Pappas did some testing for Young Living. Ooh, the baby wants to hear this. So the tea on that. So Dr. Pappas did some testing for Young Living. The reason he got um, he, Young Living was put on his radar is because um, he had a student who was um, who presented him with this jasmine essential oil. Jasmine is very expensive. It's right up there with rose. Um, rose is more expensive, but jasmine is high up. So he was presented by a distributor who was a student of his, and she asked him, can you please test this for me? So he tested the oil and it came back synthetic. It came back fake. Young Living sells this tiny five milliliter bottle of Jasmine for about $76 for the distributor price. It's just about pushing $100 if you're not a distributor at retail. So it's not a cheap five milliliter bottle of oil. So the fact that it came back synthetic was a problem. So it got somehow it got back to Young Living that the oil was synthetic. So what happened was Young Living contacted Dr. Pappas and they signed an agreement that said, I, sorry, it's a little baby, that said that Dr. Pappas was going to test oils for Young Living. And so that's what he did. He started testing their oils and he thought, great, here's a company who, he was intrigued by the fact that they owned farms and, and distilled oils off the farms. He was intrigued by that idea because it's always good, sorry about that. It's always a good idea to have an essential oil company and brand that can distribute their own products and distill their own products. They have more control. Anyway, sorry about the baby. I just want to get this video done with. So he told, he, he did their testing. Then he discovered that another oil that they sold at the time, I don't think they sell it as an individual oil anymore, but it was birch oil. And he found that it was synthetic, um, Methyl salicylate. Now, methyl salicylate is also naturally occurring. It's the it's pretty much all of what wintergreen is. If you've ever smelled wintergreen oil, and if you've ever smelled methyl salicylate, they're interchangeable because methyl salicylate is wintergreen, and wintergreen is primarily like 90, 99 percent, oh, no, almost like maybe 94 to 95 percent methyl salicylate. So it's almost all that component. But he found that birch, which also has a high methyl salicylate content, 
had nothing but synthetic methyl salicylate. So he tried, he showed the company the, the results and they brought him into a room and they tried to force him to apologize to their source of this birch oil. And he said, no, he said, pay me out the contract, I'm done. And he walked away. There was a lawsuit over this. There was a deposition video that has since been taken offline, but the, it was available online for a while before the Young Living's lawyer took it down and that's the tea. So he makes no bones about the, why he doesn't like the company. It's because they were being dishonest and they weren't trying to correct a mistake that he thought they were honestly trying to fix. So fast forward to the cinnamon issue and it was bad. So I decided to do a deep dive and that will be what the next video is gonna be about. But I, long story short is I, did all kinds of research. I took me a while to get a lot of the information. And fortunately now a lot of that information is very public. Thanks to a lot of um, other people doing the same research. So yay for that. Now, um, let's talk about a little bit about the groups that I was in. So there were a lot of groups, business groups and um, usage groups. And in these business and usage groups, I was able to, um, part I was able to participate <laughs> but I also found they were doing a lot of unsafe things. Did you know that they like to use essential oils and sunscreen? Yeah. So they would say things like um, carrot seed oil has 30 to 45 SPF. Who in their right mind thinks an essential oil has enough sun protection factor to protect your skin from the sun? It is a volatile compound. And they conflated the two things. They didn't tell you if it was carrot seed essential oil or carrot seed carrier oil because there's two different types of carrot seed oil. The other thing is um, they would use a lot of cancer patient issues. So there's actually a protocol that they posted in the group about cancer and a cancer protocol that involves young living's very expensive sacred frankincense oil. That hit a nerve because there were actual cancer patients in the group who were like, I need this protocol disturbing then business groups let's talk about the business side of things because that's going into legal territory my favorite i got into a fight in the um in a business builders group that got me kicked out and it's because i was taught and i actually have an, uh, a private message up from the diamond level that i sent to her i'm like uh, -uh. and she ignored it i don't think she even read it but they were teaching people how to spot fake oils even though they weren't fake so a brand that i really like is called now and now now foods and they sell essential oils they have a whole line i can get them at sprouts and they have clearly labeled bottles of like diluted frankincense and diluted rose and it tells you exactly how much essential oil how much carrier oil is in there so if it says 20 percent frankincense or if it says five percent rose it's accurate. It's actually properly labeled. Because at the time they were saying things like uh, any company could sell an essential oil as 100% while only putting 5% oil in it. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is a bold faced lie. That goes against every labeling rule that the Federal Trade Commission has. You cannot put on a label 100% of something and then turn around and put 5% and the law is okay with that. It is not right. And I called them out on it. It makes me so mad that they tried to sell this bold faced lie. Like any person can go and read the labeling laws on the Federal Trade Commission's website. And I posted them to the, this group. Um, and I commented, I'm like, you need to, first of all, I'm not a lawyer, but you need to be careful saying things like, um, you're going to, you can't buy that oil because it's got 5% oil in it. When you, in fact, don't know um, what the actual percentage is, you can't go to plant therapy and accuse them of diluting an essential oil that they have labeled as, as accurately as possible to be pure. And they post their GCMS reports <coughs> while <it> does not. <coughs> so 
they were taught to um, basically lie about how other companies label their oils. Young Living had to shut that down because they were going to get busted for it because it's it's a lie. And what happens when you lie about another company? You defame them. <coughs> So I got kicked out of a group for calling them out on that. And then the lady tried saying, um, I showed her the link to the Federal Trade Commission site and to the FDA site. And they're like, she she highlighted one portion, put it in quotes, put it in a comment and said, I'm done with this argument. I got other things to do. And then deleted me from the group. <clears throat> I printed out that entire conversation and I have a PDF copy and I have a print copy. So... Oops, on your part. <laughs> I have the entire conversation. And then, the other thing is, they tried to teach you in the business groups. This is getting long, and I apologize. But they tried to teach you in the business groups with with the Young Living um, commission structure. Because of the way the commission structure is set up, and I'll talk about that in a different video, you cannot, if somebody cancels their order, let's say you make commission, for February and you get paid in March and somebody cancels in April whatever they canceled in April if it's in within the 90 days let's say they have to refund a starter kit from February that you got paid for in March and the person decides in April they don't want it anymore and it's within the 30 days and it's unopened or whatever the rule is Young Living is gonna deduct that out of your commissions you're gonna end up owing Young Living whatever it was they paid you for that sale so let's say you make 50 bucks off that sale <clears throat> you have to get that 50 bucks back so what they were taught to do so what business builders high level ups were teaching um newer distributors is don't let them go through the company instead yes set, use the company's buyback program as a selling point <laughs> sorry about that but offer to buy back the kit themselves so it doesn't interfere with your commission. That's right. They didn't want the numbers of the downline and the commission structure were so important to these people that if you mess with it, you mess with their commissions and you mess with their downline sales and you mess with their totals. So instead, you were taught, even though you're a newer distributor, you were taught to buy it back for cash so that it doesn't mess with the numbers online. The other trick is they taught they taught you to um, have some people, some high level diamonds were like, have a kit ready, buy a few kits, have them on hand. And then when the person gives you their credit card, they'll buy the new kit, you eat the cost of shipping, you hand them the kit right then and there, and then the new kit that you bought with their credit card comes back to you. <clears throat> That way, they still get, you get paid, they get paid, or they, they pay for their kit, but they get to walk out the door with their pay, their kit paid for right then and there. That's expensive. Here's the thing about the Young Living kits. When I started, they're $150. That's before tax, that's before shipping. You only get 100 of that as credit on your account. So if you are doing this to get um, like a rewards point or PV bonus or any type of PV qualification, you only get 100 out of that 150. So uh, <clears throat> they were asking you to spend 150 and then later on 160, and now I think it's about $160 per kit cash plus shipping and taxes, which is about $20 total extra on top. So about $180 per kit so that you can have it on hand to hand your customers. It's a way to get people in your downline. It's just a tactic they use to try to get people to sign up in the downline. So I'm gonna stop the video here. There's a lot more to talk about and the next video part two is gonna go into research that I had, uh, that I did, and it's also gonna go into lawsuits and probably more group things. Um, but more importantly, it's gonna go into things like influencer culture and um, hyper consumerism. So stay tuned for what uh, more information on Young Living. Um, and the next video will start with why I left Young Living and we'll go into all that. All right. I apologize that the video is so long. <laughs> Thank you for sticking around. Please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.